Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to finish the platform that we started in last week's video. If you haven't seen that video, we'll put a link in the description so you can go check it out. If you did watch last week's video and you were wondering why I didn't build this at my shop and then get it delivered or at least build some of it at my shop and then deliver it, that's a great question. I actually considered that and was actually planning on it to begin with, but the client wanted me to build it on site in case there was any kind of alterations. What this platform is for is for an exhaust system for an anodizing system. All that kind of don't matter. I would just suggest going to Google anodizing and you can look it up yourself. I'm just a welder building a platform for an exhaust system. But all that being said is there's a lot going on in this space, in this building that we're in. So they wanted me building it on site in case we needed to change anything. And I'm glad we done it this way because the legs did not end up being all the way to the end. We actually ended up insetting them at the top of the platform which you'll see uh, near the end of this video so that is why we did not build it in my shop but most generally i do try to suggest to customers to build stuff you know any kind of prefab i can do ahead of time or in my shop and deliver it it's more uh efficient usually and it's just easier with a mig i mean there's a lot of reasons to build stuff in a shop not that i have a huge shop to work out of but just building it at home and like doing doing a lot of your planning in your own for me anyway, in my own head and in my own space uh, with less distraction is helpful. So anyway, the first thing that we did on this particular day was lay out where the legs were going to go. A lot come into play here. The guys that were here on site uh, helping me, they knew more about what was going on around this platform. So they, they needed to be there to tell me where, you know, how far in the legs were going to need to be and all this stuff. Um, but we laid it all out, got it square and then we bolted the plates down to the concrete and then we stood the legs up and then leveled them or plumbed them and then we set the platform on top of the legs. These legs are 10 foot tall and this is a 15 foot by 7 foot platform. This went good. I'm glad we decided to do it this way and I want to take a moment to thank those guys. If I, I doubt they watch these videos but in case they are I want to thank you guys for helping me. I couldn't have done it without the forklift, without y'all's help. You know, I didn't even bolt the plates down. One of the guys there did. Uh, I just had a lot of help that was there, and I really appreciate that help. I couldn't have done it without you guys. But it went good. It went smoothly. We got it <clears throat> secured, got it set on top of the platform. I squared it up. You know, I, I made sure it was hanging over the amount they wanted on, on each side, and then I made sure the legs were square and level once we got the platform up there. Then I tacked it off. Once the platform is in place, the next thing to do was to put eighth inch or 11 gauge or 10 gauge, 11 and 10 gauge real close in thickness, uh, smooth plate on top of this platform. Now those of you that have followed me, you know that I usually rip plate with my torch because I've never had a plasma or a saw. But I'm excited to let you know that I finally broke down and bought a Milwaukee skill saw it's a cold cutting saw, just like the chop saw that I use, or the, the blade is a cold cutting blade, uh, but it takes a particular saw, and it is a definite game changer. I've known about this saw for years. A couple of my buddies have them. I've even watched them use them, and I've almost went and bought one right then, but I've just never done enough of this type of work to make it worth buying. A lot of times, all it takes for me is one project that I, that I quoted right, or that I knew that I was gonna make decent money on, or whatever, to go buy this tool or you know depending on where i'm at personally financially like there's a lot of reasons why i don't just go out and buy tools you know right off the bat you know we, we all got a budget we all got different things that uh that we're prioritizing but this was the day i'm glad i did because it was a game changer all i did was take a chalk line and measure out my plates uh real quick whenever i measured out my plates i made my seams land on a cross member that away less warpage this way so everywhere where a plate met it was on a cross member and I left a little, oh, probably about a quarter inch gap in between each plate so I could get a bead on each side down to the plate. And then same with the outside. I left it in from the platform, I'll say a quarter inch, uh, all the way around. But anyway, I pulled my measurements, popped a chalk line and ripped it with the saw. Totally worth the money. I never want to encourage people to spend money they don't have. It all depends on where you're at in your business. I actually encourage you to use a torch for a while if you know you don't have much work going on or you're just getting into the industry. Uh, it's not a bad thing to use a torch for as long as I have. I mean, I've been welding since high school and I'm 31 years old now, and I'm just now getting something like this for a lot of different reasons. But I don't regret all the experience I've got with a torch. So that's a little side note, but I, I just wanted to throw it in there. 
but I did want to focus on the fact that this saw is a game changer if you're going to be cutting plate. I've heard my buddy told me I think he can cut three eighths or half inch plate with his saw. Some of you have commented on my videos saying that you have cut stair stringers, so like the stairs that I built a couple videos back, the uh, stringers that I cut with my torch. Some of you said you use this type of saw, a skill saw, to cut this metal. So I mean like this thing is, it's a game changer for sure. The thing I like most about it is the cleanup. It took me, I think, I cut four sheets and two cuts on each sheet and I think it took me less than an hour and I never even touched it with a grinder. If I would have cut this with a torch, even though I would have cleaned my tip and made sure there was less slag as possible on the backside, I still would have touched it with a grinder and it probably would have taken me at least an extra 30 minutes, if not longer, depending on how clean my torch was and potentially longer. I mean, it, it takes, which this saw you can't cut very fast either, but just the fact that you don't have to clean it up, game changer. So really impressed with the saw. I really liked it. We'll put a link in the description in case you are interested in a saw like this. Once I got all my plates cut, I had them guys help me set them up on the top of the platform with the forklift. And then we situated them up there, got everything lined up, you know, the spacing in between each plate and off the edges and stuff. And I actually had my dad help me on this particular day. Whenever it comes to welding sheet metal on top of any kind of platform, I try to start from one end and go one way. This is gonna help with it bubbling and whatnot. So clamps and then also like a helper. So in this case, I, I started on one side, I welded, I, I stitch welded all this. I didn't seam weld any of this out. I stitch welded it. I started on one side, stitch welding it, and then I went, I think, down like a foot and put my first stitch weld on the four foot side. And then I had my dad stand on the top and then I got up underneath on a ladder and I put stitch welds on the bottom of that cross member. That way it held the middle down and then I went back to the top and stitch welded it going all in the same direction. And then once I got to my next sheet, I'd done the same thing and we just repeated the process over and over. But the whole idea was to not get a bubble in the plate, especially when working with eighth inch plate like we are here. Once we got our plates welded down, the next thing and the very last thing that we did was put some bracing in. So on each seven foot side, like on the ends, we put a brace in. That's what I'm doing here. I'm welding uh, a brace in. I put one on the other side and then we put gussets diagonally on the 15 foot way, also known as knee braces or they're essentially just extra support. And I use that same six inch channel, put one in each corner. All this bracing started it right up. I was super happy with it. And to my knowledge, the customer was happy with it also. This was a good project. I think I had four days, maybe less. I think I essentially had four days by the time this project was an hour from my house. So including my drive time, I think I had roughly 40 hours in this project. But of course I had some help I don't want to uh, take away from that. I want to keep that in mind, you know. Uh, anytime I'm, I do a project, I try to keep in mind what all help I had. Because if I go to quote this job again or something similar and they don't have a forklift or guys there to help me, I'm going to have to remember that and include that in my quote. So those are just little things that I'm always taking notes of when it comes to projects. But just so you know how long something like this took, because I think that's helpful to any of you looking to do your own business or do something similar. My advice for this week or what I learned on this project, as well with stuff I learn on every project, is in the planning phase. So when it comes to planning a project, I mentioned this in last week's video about having an engineer or, yeah, I said an engineer in, in last week's video, but that kind of ties into what I'm getting at here. An engineer is involved in the uh, planning phase of any building, of any fabrication, like, you know, that's where it starts. And if you're like me, I wasn't raised on a farm, but I live, work, help on a farm now, and as a landowner or a DIYer, do-it-yourselfer, you tend to just kind of imagine something and then just start building it and then make it work. Then that's strongly how I am. Uh, it all depends on what it is, but the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think it's super, super important to take the time, no matter how much time it takes, to find somebody that can do CAD drawing, learn CAD drawing yourself, or something of that sort, or draw it on the concrete, like what I've done. Take the time to draw a project so you can figure out where stuff is gonna be, or how long your pieces need to be, or, or whatever the case, because if you're gonna make a mistake, you'd rather make the mistake in the drawing phase than in the cutting stage, especially for how expensive material is right now. I say this from experience. 
and I don't mean I messed up bad on this project, but little disclaimer, the gussets that we put in here, I cut one gusset first and we looked at them and one of the guys there that's kind of overseeing this project, he said, well, let's make it 12 inches, you know, from the corner, let's make it 12 inches right here in that gap to the start of the six inch channel. And I said, all right. So I went and laid it out on the concrete, but I was in a hurry because this was the last day that I was going to be here. So I was trying to get it all done because it's an hour away from my house and I didn't want to have to come back for two hours the next day. So my productive mindset was like, I need to get this done. And I was just heads down trying to figure it all out. Well, I messed up and I didn't add my six inches of for my channel. So it was still not quite 12 inches from the corner like he wanted. It was a little bit less. And he was okay with it and it still was enough support. But I was very mad at myself for that. But it's because I was in a hurry. So all this to say, learn from my mistakes. But also, sometimes you don't have that freedom. Like, if they could have easily said, no, we want 12 inches right there. And I could have spent another, it wouldn't have been, it probably would have been 30, maybe an hour of my time to recut all those. Because what I, another place where I messed up was I didn't just cut one. Once I got one cut, I went ahead and cut the other ones. I should have cut one. And went and put it in place but what i'm saying is take the time to draw it and plan it and check it check it over and over again that way you don't waste material or that way you make sure it's right because this was just a gusset but what if that was on the platform you know what if it was too short and uh depending again depending on what it is yes us welders can weld stuff back together straight and make it look like there isn't even a weld there but in some situations like the bigger higher end projects you get on and such that may not be acceptable they may not want to seam somewhere they may not want you know because of engineering purposes they may not want to weld here or whatever so that's the reason i bring all this up is the planning phase you know i've talked a lot about that whenever i was talking about pipeline stuff whenever i was pipelining because i seen so much value in all the prep that we took as pipeliners to prep our ends on test day to make sure we had a good fit because if you had a real good fit everything else went good. The bead went good. The hot pass went good. It was like a chain effect. So if you've got a real solid plan and you've checked your plan several times, there's going to be less room for error. With all this being said, we're only human. Stuff's going to happen. Plans are going to change. I'm my own worst critic. So that's why I beat myself up over stuff like this. But I just want you all to learn from my mistakes. You know, I don't, it drives me crazy me making mistakes, but I see so much value in it and I learn so much from it. So I want to share it with you. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out our website, arosswelding.com, for tools, stickers, these stickers that you see on my cup, all on the Aros Welding website. Uh, digital prints of my gen pole, A-frame, gate jacks, constantly adding stuff to the store, or trying to. So thanks for all the support. Thank you all for watching. And remember, learn something every day.